So what is statistics? It's the branch of mathematics that deals with collection, presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. So what's data then? Data is a collection of information in the form of numbers like ages of people, marks obtained by students of a class, temperature of various places. So anything which you can express in the form of a number is called data. It's of two types. First one is primary data. When I myself collect the data for my use, it's called primary data and it's more reliable because I'll take much care to accurately and appropriately collect the data. The second one is secondary data which is not collected me, by me myself but has been collected by someone else and now I am using it for my own purpose. So such a data is not that reliable because you are not sure how accurately it was collected. Next we have range of the data. The data which we collect is in the form of number and each number is called an observation. So to find the range, we have to find out the minimum and maximum values of observation. Their difference gives us the range. Then we have frequency. It's the number of time any particular observation is occurring in the given data. To explain these terms, I'll take up this simple example. Here we have marks of 10 students. So can you find out the minimum and maximum values? Yes, they are. 9 and 30. So, so the range of this data is 30 minus 9 that is 21. Now if I want to find out the frequency of any particular value I'll see how many times it's occurring. For example here the frequency of 19 is 2. In the same way if you see the frequency of other numbers it is coming 1. Now as the data has been collected Next comes how to present it effectively and meaningfully. So there are many ways of presenting data. Frequency distribution table, bar graph, histogram, frequency polygon. Today we are going to take up the first one that is frequency distribution table. Now frequency distribution tables are of two types. One is ungrouped or discrete table and other is grouped or continuous table. So first I'll take up the discrete frequency distribution table. To make you understand how to draw this table, let's take a simple example showing the number of children in the 15 families of a locality. Okay, if you observe this data, you will see that there are only few distinct observations in this data. In such cases, it's always better to make a discrete or ungrouped frequency distribution table. So let's see how it's made. We will be making three columns in this table and in the first column you will represent the quantity which is being observed like it is number of children here. The second and the third columns will always be tally marks and frequency. First we will find out all the distinct observations given in the data and arrange them in the first column in increasing order. Next we will read the observations from the data one by one and put tally marks in the second column. So first observation here is 3. I will put a tally mark in the column against 3. Second is 1. Third is 0. Fourth is 2, then again 2. For the fifth value, we put a cross, which makes a bunch of 5. So this is what we get at the end. Now we'll convert these tally marks into numbers and write them in the third column, that is frequency. So first one is 3, again 3. Now this one is 5 plus 1, 6. And next is also 3. So this way we get the discrete frequency distribution table. Next we have continuous frequency distribution table, terms related to it. 
first one is class interval the groups which are made to condense the data like 10 to 20 20 to 30 etc they are called class intervals next is limits of an interval an interval has upper and lower limits which i'll discuss later then we have class marks this is the formula for class marks lower limit plus upper limit upon 2 the class marks are also called mid values then comes the class size it is equal to upper limit minus lower limit so let's take up an example to explain these terms i'm taking the interval 20 to 30 now in this interval the first number is called lower limit of the interval and the second number is called upper limit of the interval now the class marks of this interval will be obtained by adding the lower limit and upper limit and dividing by 2 that gives us 50 upon 2 that is 25 so 25 is the class mark of this particular interval and you can see it lies in the middle of this interval so that is why it's also called mid value next the class size of this interval will be obtained by subtracting the lower limit from the upper limit which is equal to 10 here there are two types of class intervals exclusive and inclusive intervals these are the examples of two types of intervals in exclusive intervals the upper limits are not included in the intervals that's why they are called exclusive intervals it means that 10 will not be included in 5 to 10 but it will be included in 10 to 15 whereas in inclusive intervals both the numbers are included in the same interval 1 will be included in 1 to 10 and 10 will also be included in 1 to 10 and that's why they are called inclusive intervals in exclusive intervals the upper limit of any interval becomes the lower limit of the next interval same way 15 becomes the lower limit of the next interval whereas in inclusive interval you can observe that the lower limit of the next interval is not equal to the upper limit of the previous interval but it is greater than that 21 is greater than 20 we can convert inclusive interval into exclusive easily for this we subtract any upper limit from the next lower limit like 11 minus 10 is equal to 1 and we divide this number by 2 which gives us 0 0.5 now to change an interval into exclusive interval we will subtract the number 0 0.5 from the lower limit and add it to the upper limit in this manner these three intervals are converted into exclusive intervals which are 0 0.5 to 10.5 10.5 to 20.5 and 20.5 to 30.5 so I hope it's clear how to convert the inclusive intervals into exclusive intervals. Now let us discuss how to make a continuous or group frequency distribution table. I have taken up an example containing marks obtained by 15 students. First of all, you have to find out the minimum and maximum values of this data. So you may observe that the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 18. We will make the table in the same way but instead of distinct values we will now select a class size and according to that we will make some class intervals i have taken the class size 5 while selecting the class intervals you have to take care of two things first your minimum value should lie in your first interval so zero is lying in this interval here and second the maximum value should lie in your last interval so our maximum value 18 is lying in this interval now starting in the same way as earlier we will read the values and put the tally marks 13 is lying in the interval 10 to 15 
18 in the intervals 15 to 20 and so on. Proceeding in this manner, we find that the frequencies of the various classes are 3, 2, 8 and 2. Another thing which you have to check in your both the kind of tables is that the sum of all the frequencies should always come equal to the total number of observations. In this example, there were 15 observations and you can see on adding 3, 2, 8 and 2, we get the sum 15. 